Hello and welcome to the Total Entertainment Podcast with me, Paul Collis. So, what do we have today? Well, it's UB40, but here we go. You already done UB40 recently. Why are they back in so soon? Well, it's a case of when is UB40 not UB40? When it's UB40? And if you're a bit confused, then this is the situation. So... The UB40 that we did recently was the uh, fully legit original UB40 and the one tonight is the UB40 that eventually became UB40 and that is basically as time went on we had members of the original UB40 leave until it was eventually just people that replaced them so UB40 was just the name and then when the original team of UB40 decided that they wanted to come back as UB40 there was a massive dispute over who gets to be called UB40 and I guess they all decided that they are both UB40 because they all got the same kind of rights to the to the name because the um, the UB40 of today were were supposed to be continuing as UB40 because they never broke up and then you're obviously the original UB40 got back together and they're both UB40 can't take away the name from the people who wrote all the songs so that is how it is and they both get to perform as UB40 even though one is the original UB40 and one is the swap outs of UB40 so Now we've uh, cleared that up, I'm not going to go over the history of uh, UB40 because if you want to hear that you should go on to the original UB40 uh, podcast where it explains all of this as well and you'll find a link to that in in the description below. So today's show is a one truck show. One truck show? But it's UB40. Yes, it's the uh, swap out UB40 or the other UB40. And they don't have much of the money because they don't actually own all the rights to the songs. So the money sticks with the uh, with the 100% original version of UB40. So this version of UB40 doesn't have enough money to have a massive elaborate lighting and sound rig. But at the end of the day, it's all about the songs. And whether or not who plays it best is arguable. And it's just a matter of perspective on who plays the songs better. And we'll find that out later on today. But let's have a look at what they got stage-wise. So stage left and stage right, you've got one line array and it's one wide. Although there is no line array pointing 45 degrees outwards to the sides. Just got the front line arrays. They've got four front fills on the stage. And they have six subs in front of the stage. So that's it for their sound rig. Lighting rig, they've only got three lighting bars, one front of the house and two on stage. So the two on stage are just LED wash units and they're currently rigging up the uh, bar, the two on stage bars. I am unsure on what units are on the front of the house bar because they're not hanging yet. They just, they just got the bar hanging on the winches. And I would assume that they've got a load of floor units but we will see on the update later on. Currently it's half 12 in the afternoon and they've still got a lot of time to go. The mixer is currently being built on the uh, back of the arena and today's show is a, is a hybrid seat and so you've got some of the seating tiers out and the rest is dance floor. So people can have a nice dance or have a sit down depending on how they feel. And don't forget with a lot of the uh, fans of UB40 you'd have a lot of older people who would probably stay in their seats all night but then again you'd have a load of people who will be uh, going up and down depending on how they at that precise moment in time we'll be back after this so not only does Master X Media have a series of podcasts but we also have a series of books the first book is actually two books it's volume one and volume two of a tribute to working at sea 
The Best Fiction is Based on Truth. This is a compilation of short stories, rants and poems loosely based on the author's experience at working on a cruise ship. Some of these stories are based on actual events but highly exaggerated, whilst other stories are pure fiction. The title of the book, A Tribute To, is fitting with the tone of the book because, like a tribute act, it is a blatant altered reality where you can enjoy it knowing it's not quite the truth. There are things of alcoholism which used to be highly prevalent within workers in the cruise industry, as well as stories with a sexual nature. So sit down, relax and enjoy the ride of A Tribute to Working at Sea Volumes 1 and 2. All of these books are available on Amazon and are available in paperback and on Kindle. And the links for all these books are in the description below. And we're back. So everything's up in the air and working fully at the moment. And they've not long finished their sound check. It's a pretty basic setup on stage. You have the drum centre stage. You have the percussion stage right of the uh, drum kit. Stage left, you have the rest of the instruments. And I guess they're going to come forward downstage. You have lighting wise on the stage and for the uh, floor units and at the back behind the drum riser you have a load of tips up flight cases with uh, some moving head wash units on there and they're basically in a fan position so they arc around the uh, back of the drum riser and they'll give off a nice lighting effect all the LED wash units are BI units so they can be pixel mats to give even more effects and you have a handful of moving light LED profile units to give some uh, nice shapes to the mix. Other than that, the lighting is remaining pretty basic, but it's not what you got, but how you use it kind of situation. We'll be back after this. A tribute to men that hate their jobs is a brutal but witty portrayal of working a job you hate. In this podcast, there are themes explored in which happy workers simply wouldn't understand unless they listen to these cautionary tales from a man that lost his ideal job because of the global pandemic. Be warned that this podcast contains strong, offensive language that some listeners may not want to hear. In addition, this podcast is definitely not recommended for younger audiences. The links for this is in the description below. And we're back, so lighting wise, it was kept very, very basic with a standard backlighting position with minimum movement and the vast majority of the movement came from the uh, pixel mapped bees eyes. So that's how it broke up. Occasionally had some movement depending on what song it was and that would mainly uh, scan into the crowd. So nothing. So nothing too heavy and when, when the lights would scan the crowd it would be to emphasise parts of the song. Same with a little bit of standard flashing when they were strobing off the, the profile units. Yet again for musical emphasis of songs. And throughout the whole show the, uh, the washers that they put on just followed the same pattern. They were in the same place and they just changed the colours from both the uh, wash units and the profile units and a little bit of gobo here and there but that's about it the lights were pretty much in the same position throughout unless they were scanning the audience now what they had on the back cloth was they had a white cycler armor or sky cloth or psych for short and in the middle of this psych was a black cloth with the ub40 logo on and what they did they positioned three moving lights standing on the floor either side of the black drape so you're on the on the essential white part and uplit that which had a nice effect especially when I was using the purples and greens because they are very stark contrasting colours and it just came up with a nice upward effect which you can't go wrong especially if you're lighting a cyclic armour properly which they were. There's no follow spot or even robo spots which they just did to cut costs I would assume because they didn't have as much money in the budget as the other UB40 but didn't take away the quality of their act though 
but we'll get on that in a bit. So what they did was they just had a nice face wash which just stayed in position throughout the whole show and they make it slightly brighter or slightly dimmer depending on what the lighting state was colour wise or if it went to blackout or and that and that was it so very very basic. Okay so sound wise we had a very nice clarity yeah it was the 22 karat clarity and because of the size of the PA it just didn't kill out the vocals which we've seen a few times uh, in the past with other shows but not with this one and if you compare this UB40 to the other UB40 they pretty much had half the sound system that the other UB40 had during March so yeah half the power but the clarity was there and that's all it and that's all that mattered really was the clarity and performance wise UB40 this well this UB40 they're very animated they interacted well with each other on stage you know, uh, rocking out, I say rocking out, you know, you know what I mean, you know, just going up to each other and playing their instruments, enjoying themselves, and it came across on the stage, and this UB40 was every bit as good as the other UB40, just one version has more money than the other, and that that's the shame really, because at the end of the day, this UB40 was the one that finished when they were still very mainstream and popular but because other members of the band who left over time decided to reform and that's how you have the split by getting two different UB40s and the originals come back to claim the crown which is a shame. Both offshoots of the band were just as good as, the, as each other and they both rightly deserve a place on that stage and they both rightly deserve the use of the name. But what would, what would be great in the future is if they bury the hatchet and reunify the whole band. So get them all together again, which is doable. It, it's all down to the uh, willingness to do this. And you know, it, <laughs> swap people in and out depending on the stage of the tour and whatnot give each other a break and work together maybe but who knows maybe it will happen one day maybe it won't but geez this UB40 as I said were just as good as the other UB40 because they had the crowd singing they had the crowd dancing they had everyone enjoying themselves and that is what it's all about at the end of the day the band enjoying themselves and the audience enjoying themselves. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. If you've enjoyed today's podcast, please hit like, subscribe and share. And if you haven't already done so, why not check out more content from Monster X Media on our website, which is www.monsterxmedia.info and we'll catch you next time. Bye for now.